Hey guys, welcome back to the Vani Podcast, the podcast making you invulnerable to the coercion of the state and the servile society. Uh, today I'm back with uh, another uh, brief article, um, this one uh, certainly certainly in the realm of self-liberation, um, but uh, yeah, for this uh, 55th, 55th intermission episode, uh, I will cover an article from Vani Life, March 1973, uh, by Rayo. Uh, it's titled, Ecology to Vanu to Technology to Peace. Um, or, you know, ecology... Uh, Vanu technology piece, um, your arrows. So, um, yeah, that is uh, the name of the article. I will uh, go ahead and uh, read that uh, briefly. It's, uh, it's it's rather short, and uh, then uh, we'll discuss. Um, but uh, I will mention Vanu Life March 1973 is available via LUA Publications uh, and also for free, um, as uh, as as always. Uh, if you want to uh, you know follow along or download the publication for free, you can find that at vanupodcast.com forward slash vl. Again, com forward slash VL to download that in its entirety. Or you can uh, purchase the paperback. Uh, just go to libertyunderattack.com. Uh, you can find, also find it uh, there, in, uh, there in the show notes, too, uh, for this episode. So with that said, please enjoy. Ecology to Vanu. To be relatively safe from coercion, I must live in harmony with nature. I must disturb the environment less than does a deer or bear or porcupine else I will draw the attention of two-legged beasts. Our shelters are small and low. They blend in with the trees, bushes, and rocks. I cut few trees, and those I cut are dead or crowded and dying. I use fire sparingly, only for cooking and crafts, not heating. I kill only to eat or in self-defense, and usually eat what I kill. Around camp, I often wear moccasins and mucklucks, or walk in rocks to minimize erosion and tracks. Any gardening is in small patches and grow holes, scattered in natural openings. Technology to Vanu. In some ways, Vanuans, wilderness Vanuans at least, are like the people who lived on this continent 400 years ago, but I am not hostile to technology. On the contrary, advanced technology makes Vanu attractive. Limited to the materials and methods of 400 years ago, most of my energies would be spent securing food and protecting myself from the elements. I would have neither time nor tools to protect myself from organized predators. I would be less successful than were American Indians, who had generations of experience and faced more crudely equipped aggressors. This doesn't mean I shun primitive methods, either. I happily blend techniques of all ages to live most freely and effectively. Usually I use native materials for basic structures and large furnishings, manufactured items for light and mobile accessories. Technology to Ecology Technology of the early industrial era was cumbersome. Manufacturing was most efficiently performed by throngs of people, and big machines crowded together in huge factories. Products were big, consuming large amounts of raw materials. Big railroads and trucks were needed to haul ores to smelters and products to consumers. Mountains of waste and lakes of pollutants were generated. Early industrial technology was not very compatible with Vanu, nor with a clean environment. But bigness usually indicates crudeness. Trends are now the other way. The newer... More sophisticated products are smaller. Compare a transistor radio with an old vacuum tube set, a cassette recorder with a player piano, a box of microfiche cards with a library of books, freeze-dried foods with canned foods, a desktop computer with an office full of clerks. As products grow smaller and more efficient, less raw materials, space, power, and transport are needed, and less waste is generated. Better communication replaces physical concentration. Factories, offices, and stores are beginning to decentralize with electronic links, replacing the routine face-to-face contacts. Oh gosh, is that a prescient statement. Wow. Anyway, back to it. Vanu to peace. Advanced technology makes Vanu attractive. Contemporary weaponry and coercive institutions make Vanu imperative. In earlier times, government provided order, if not freedom, and defense, if not peace. But now, when nuclear and bacteriological weapons can be rocketed or smuggled to any city on Earth, governments are as obsolete as moats and parapets. The contemporary state is not only incapable of protecting its citizens from outside aggressors, it has become the biggest aggressor, with its endless taxes, conscriptions, and interferences. The state provides justice by mass terror, freedom by mass servitude, and defense by mass murder. Just as the state is obsolete as a means of defense against foreign governments and private criminals, so politics are obsolete as a means of defense against the state. Political reform, revolutions, or education, at most, changes rulers and slogans. 
It does not bring about enduring freedom. In a community of a few hundred, democratic procedures can be helpful. In a nation of millions, they are only placebos. Defense, like industry, commerce, and agriculture, must be decentralized. Individuals and small groups must provide their own. It is too early to say which forms of Vani will prove most effective. How many will live in wilderness or underground, or on the move, or in ways I can't even imagine. But I think the emphasis will be on concealment, deception, mobility, not intimidation. I believe I can be relatively safe and free, only by being invisible or inconspicuous, not by pointing missiles at everyone else on Earth. Vanu to Ecology Pollution and exhaustion of resources is caused not by too many people, so much as by too many people all forced to live the same way. The Earth supports a vast quantity of life, so long as that life is diverse, live in different habitats, eat different foods, defends itself in different ways. Organisms tend to diversify because there are advantages to diversity. That is why there are so many different forms of life on Earth. Similarly, humans diversify when able to exercise their preferences. Consider the variety of peoples in North America 500 years ago, all descended from just a few bands of immigrants. The relative sameness of humans today is due in large part to coercive institutions of the recent past. Just as a one-crop farmer depends on uniformity of plans, so an authoritarian system depends on uniformity of people. A state can control only to the extent that people act and react in similar ways. It is no accident that the strongest motive for compulsory tax-supported school in the U.S. a century ago when they were imposed was not better education, literacy was already substantial and fast-rising, but destruction of minority cultures through forced association and indoctrination of children. So, big coercive governments, like one-crop farming, is inherently bad ecology, free Non-conforming people, like diverse natural vegetation, are part of the Earth. You've just heard Ecology, Vanu, Technology, and Peace by Rayo, originally published in Vanu Life March 1973, uh, which again you can get for free at vanupodcast.com forward slash VL or via paperback at libertyundertack.com uh, using the link uh, in the show notes or just by visiting the website. So uh, yeah, let's talk a little bit, uh, just, just a couple points here that that's uh I guess I, I thought of uh when uh when reading this uh this article, but you know, Rayo certainly certainly uh you know had to, had some, some very good foresight to see where, where technology was going. Um I mean there's just there's just quite a bit here that's <laughs> you know, that just that just really really rings true. Especially there in that last in that last portion, uh when he was talking about uh, you know, diversity. I mean you look at what's going on today and uh I mean he noticed this back in the nineteen sixties, but um, everyone, uh, you know, reacts in the same way. Right. Um, and it, 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 it brings to mind, uh, I, there's a YouTuber that uh, I watch. Her name's Lavette. Found out about her from, uh, from Matt from Quantum of Conscience, but, um, she talks about, um, it's that, uh, you know, the, the Hegelian dialectic, uh, you know, problem reaction solution. Well, the only way to win is to not react. Um, it's, uh, to kind of, uh, step out of that realm of duality and just, uh, uh, you know, like, a, of, of good and evil, perhaps, and, uh, you know, stepping into that realm and that the center realm, um, you know, uh, I guess that, you know, the, the, the saying, you know, find your center, you know, I guess looking at things objectively, just being the objective observer. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, that's, uh, I guess just a little bit of a, a little bit of a side topic, but, but yeah, you know, he's, he's right. Um. You know, and, and certainly over the past fifty or sixty years, we've we've, we've seen that, um, yeah, for sure, for sure. And in some ways, you know, very, very much a uniformity, but uh, then very much, um, very much dividing people into camps too, for the purposes of divide and conquer, uh, and just just endless conflict, um, endless conflict over nonsense, over nothing, et cetera, et cetera. And I guess the final point I'll mention here, just to, to keep this uh, keep this episode, uh, you know, more brief. Uh, briefer, uh, whatever way you want to you want to put that. Um, technolo- the, te- the technology portion. I'll admit, um, whenever all this nonsense kicked off back in March, I my, I, I decided that uh, I, I figured the best thing to do was to go back to, um, you know, the texts of the folks who the the texts, you know, the books of the folks who developed, uh, or I guess that wrote about this technology. You know, um, <laughs> you know, a lot of these uh, these these authors like Friedhoff uh, Friedhoff Capra. Um, you know, Brave New World, uh, you know, books, books like that, where, you know, these, these technocrats are, you know, basically laying out the plan. So probably about August or September of this year, like I was like, you know, fuck technology, I'm done. 
um, pardon my French, but I was like, you know, just screw it. Like this is this this stuff is this is tools of the enemy. So like, I kind of pulled back and just um, you know pulled back to life on the homestead and kind of uh, you know detect um, you know the house. And I'm still still doing. That. I think that's I, I think that's a good thing to do. Um, but uh, it was kind of a visceral reaction um, <laughs> for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, he's he's certainly right. I mean, uh, he's certainly right that some of this advanced technology um, could be highly beneficial to the new ones. And I'll, I'll kind of mention here just briefly. Just briefly, uh, I guess the next big project here for um, for Pasnia and I guess for for just Vanu in general is uh, there's there's we've talked to uh, Jamie Baconic, uh, one of our, our one of the friends of the, um, one of our, our you know friends of Vanu, who's been on this on this podcast a number of times. He um, has been working on something called the Freedom Box, and um, we've got something working on for Pasnia called the Pasnia Library. Um, so like we're going to use this pretty high tech solution. We're going to have we're, we're we're pretty much decentralizing a lot, or I guess decentralizing and taking offline a lot of very valuable content and knowledge. It's going to be a, I guess a knowledge base for one, um, and I also want to have like uh, as as far as like a private service for it's like private service. You know, Pasnian Library. One of the benefits of being a Pasnian is you get access to this Pasnian Library, and I'll have podcasts, videos, um, books everything um you know all, all sorts of stuff and I, I kind of envision like it'd be cool to have like instead of connecting to netflix or to apple Podcasts or to you know a podcaster on your phone you just connect to the pasnia library and you have access to all that stuff offline and if um I, not obviously ways to connect it through ipfs and, and torrents and and all of that um like there's there's so much cool stuff happening in the background um but regardless uh point is um for this section uh using the freedom box as an example is that uh, some of this advanced technology can be very, very liberating, um, and uh, it's not worth uh, throwing out the, uh, you know, the, the the saying, throwing out the baby with the bathwater. It's true, um, it's definitely true. But uh, I certainly think that we need to exercise caution, and also um, put much more stock into, um, put much more stock into how much time, um, you know, you're putting into technology, and also um, be very aware of what you're putting your attention and focus onto. Um, it's really, yeah, really, really important, really important because in this, in this highly propagandized world, and I, I know like there's, there's, there's the, there's the idea of, you know, if, if you, if you know the way the magic trick's done, you can't, you aren't tricked by it anymore. But at the same time with a lot of this propaganda technology and, and, uh, you know, media, um, there's still a lot of stuff in the subconscious that I, I would just, I mean, even with, even at the, at the place I was like last year, for example, um, I mean, there was still plenty of collectivist spooks to where, you know, the subconscious, you know, the, some of the subconscious programming things probably could work. So, um, I, 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 I still do highly recommend, you know, don't subject yourself to propaganda. Um, that's probably, probably wise. Um, but, um, yeah, there's there's certainly I guess to, to, to close out this this kind of uh, portion, um, certainly benefits, certainly ways to to liberate yourself using technology. But again, just be be careful. Um, obviously, just be careful. Um, it's the age of deception. Well, maybe not necessarily, maybe not technically, but uh, it is certainly an age of deception, and uh, I've got to be very very vigilant. Uh, reality ain't very realistic. So, I guess uh, I'll just leave it there for now. Let me see if there's any other points I want to bring up. I guess not not so much uh, other than just to, to point out that when he talks about um, you know, constructing his Vanu shelter, remember that at this time, um, and I guess as far as we know, him and Roberta, Dr. You know, Dr. Gatherer, they always pursued, or I guess they pursued wilderness Vanu and only got more radical with it. So I guess that's just worth uh, pointing out uh, as, as, a, as a brief caveat. But uh, anyway, I think that's uh, all I have for today. Uh, again, to pick this up uh, for free, vanupodcast.com forward slash VL. Or just go to libertarianattack.com uh, to pick up the paperback copy of that and to uh, and uh, to find discounted books, bundles, privacy tools, uh, all that good stuff. And uh, to mention the Freedom Box one more time, um, should be able to get those going here soon. Um, and we will we will need some uh, some introductory folks uh, to help us, uh, I guess, to help us uh, test out some things. So if uh, you're interested in kind of being a part of that pilot program. Um, then uh, yeah, just go to passing.com, join our uh, committee or committee of correspondence chat group, and uh, yeah, we'll be uh, probably coordinating it there. So I think that's all I have for you. Uh, thanks, guys.